Hi everyone, uh, this is a presentation of the paper Time Memory Analysis for Parallel Collision Search Algorithms. Uh, and this is joint work with Sorina Ionica and uh, Gilles Decon. My name is Monica Trimoska, and we are all from the University of Picardy in France. Now let us first uh, introduce uh, what the collision search algorithms are. Uh, say we have a random map F from a finite set S to the, that same finite set S. Uh, and let's say we will denote the cardinality of S by uh, big N. Uh, now, a collision uh, of, uh, on this random map is uh, any pair R, R prime of elements in S, such that uh, F of R equals F of R prime. Okay, so the classical um, presentation of um, a collision search is, for instance, the polar row method. Here, uh, that is depicted in this picture, so you have uh, starting from an element uh, x0, uh, uh, you do this uh, random walk using the f function, and uh, since the set s is finite, you are sure that at some point uh, we will discover the same element uh, twice. Okay, so this is what the cycle depicts. Uh, now, uh, and uh, this uh, point, the point that we discover twice is called a collision. Now, ideally, f uh, should be a random map. Uh, and uh, we also have a formula for the expected number of steps until a collision is found, which is roughly square root of uh, the cardinality of the set and is calculated using the Bernay paradox. Uh, there are many applications of co collision search uh, algorithms. So, for instance, in, uh, there are both applications that require only one collision, like the elliptic curve discrete log problem. And there are applications that require multiple collisions. So, for instance, the attack on 3DES, classically. And you also have ECDLP in the multi-user setting. And um, some newer applications are in the isogeny-based crypto world. So you have computational super-singular isogeny problem. Uh, in this presentation, and uh, we will use uh, the elliptic curve discrete log problem to explain how a collision search algorithm works, and also our implementation was done uh, using the, for this application in mind. Um, let us define and uh, set some notations. So the let E be an elliptic uh, curve over a finite field K. Now the ECDLP problem is given two points on this curve, P and Q. Uh, find an integer x uh, such that uh, x times p equals q. And um, we recall here the definition of a collision, and we show an example of what a collision is uh, for this uh, application. So you have starting from a point r on the curve, um, f um, uh, puts r into either r plus p, 2 times r, r times q, um, and uh, this uh, set uh, R is divided arbitrarily in three sets. Now, this is just an example. It can be any other uh, function, but you need a function that adds uh, P and Q to the existing point. Uh, because uh, the most improper property of this function is that uh, if we are given an input that is a linear combination of P and Q, then the function should output also a linear combination of P and Q. A uh, different one with different uh, coefficients here. How are we going to use this to find the discrete log? Well, um, we can now define what a collision is in our case. So a collision is uh, when we have two different linear combinations of the same random point R on the curve. And using this, and we already know that x times p equals q, so we can easily compute x as such. Now that was the classical uh, collision search ideas. Now we go to the parallel collision search algorithm, which was proposed by Van Orschet and Wiener. Um, so let's say uh, in a random walk, one of the ways to detect the collision would be to just store all of the points, right? So when we find the same point twice, we will detect it immediately. Now, it is uh, not possible to store all of the points because it's uh, simply too much. So the idea that Van Orschet and Wiener had was to store only a proportion of uh, the points in the set, which we call uh, distinguished points. These are just points that have some easily uh, testable uh, distinguishing property. Like, for instance, in the CDLP case, we can say that our X-coordinate has uh, three trailing zero bits. 
and we only store points that have three trailing zero bits. We also have a very important parameter, theta, which is the proportion of the distinguished points in the set S. And um, another um, difference of this algorithm with everything that was discussed until now is that this is a parallel collision search, okay? So instead of having only one random walk, we will have a, a random walk starting uh, from uh, a different point for each thread that is involved in this algorithm. So um, this is depicted in this picture here. And uh, you have, um, for instance, here you have two threads that start from a different point and collide in a, uh, at a non-distinguished point. Okay, so a very also important thing to note here is that since the walk is random but also deterministic, even if threads collide in a non-distinguished point, they will continue to um, march uh, toward the same distinguished point and then discover the collision. Now let us see the work that we did on this algorithm. First, we did uh, some uh, time complexity analysis, both in the one collision case and the multi-collision case. Um, and for both of these cases, we um, derived the optimal value for theta. Um, the analysis is more interesting in the multi-collision case, so this is what we're going to present here. In the one collision case, we didn't do um, uh, many uh, improvements compared to the original analysis. Um, we just give a more rigorous um, uh, claim uh, that the algorithm scales perfectly. Um, so in the multi-collision case, we have um, uh, both the case when uh, the memory is constrained and the case when the memory is not constrained. So let's first see as an intermediate result the case when the memory is not constrained. We have uh, a formula for the expected total number of computed distinguished points for finding m collisions and we suppose that memory is unlimited okay this is um, this is the formula and it turns out to be pretty accurate compared to uh, our experimental results even uh, for as few as 100 collisions now we will use this to derive a formula for a case that is more um, uh, relevant in the real world that is the case where the memory is limited Okay, so here's the theorem that gives us the expected running time to find m collisions with a memory constraint of w words. Uh, we have some other parameters here. We have uh, L, that is the number of used processors, and note how L divides the whole time memory. So this uh, indicates that the algorithm should uh, scale perfectly. Of course, not uh, so much in practice, but um, close to that. So we also have, uh, we still have theta that we introduced, that is the proportion of distinguished points, and n is still the cardinality of our um, set S. So before uh, we decompose this formula a bit, uh, let's see how this algorithm works in practice. So we assume that while we still have uh, memory left, we will continue adding points while looking for the collision. And when we add w points, we have to stop uh, we can no longer add any more points, so the new points that are created to try to find a collision with the existing points, uh, they are uh, thrown out. Okay, so this is, uh, um, this is unfortunate, it, uh, it has some implications on the algorithm, but this is the strategy that we have to take if uh, our memory is limited. Now, uh, this means that we will have two parts in the algorithm, the part where we still um, look for a collision and store points, and the part that we only look for a collision. Uh, so we have first here the expected number of iterations needed to find and store W points, which is just uh, if uh, 1 over theta is uh, the um, uh, expected size of uh, the walk to a distinguished point, then we multiply that by W. And then uh, for the rest of the points, we need to use our intermediate formula. Remember that uh, we had a formula that tells us uh, if we want to find m collisions, how many points do we need to store? Okay. So inversely, we can calculate if we had stored uh, w points, how many collisions did we find until now? Okay. So that is what we have here: the number of collisions found after storing w points, and m minus that is the number of collisions that we still need to find, and of course we multiply this by the expected number of iterations needed to find one collision when W points are already stored. And note here that this W now is fixed because we no longer store any more points. 
So a uh, corollary from uh, this uh, theorem would be uh, the optimal proportion of uh, distinguished points uh, that is minimizing this time complexity. Okay, so we found the optimal value of theta. Another thing that we can uh, derive from this is if we choose this, uh, uh, if we choose the value for theta as such, uh, what would be the running time of the PCS algorithm for finding n over two collisions? Uh, n over two is um, the number of collisions that you need, for instance, for a classical meet in the middle attack. And uh, what this formula tells us, it, uh, we won't go into details uh, about how it is derived, but uh, we see here that uh, we have W as a denominator, which shows us that the more points we can store, actually, the running time uh, becomes uh, lower. So it shows that memory is an important factor in the running time complexity. Now, this is already something that we knew intuitively. Of course, the more points you can store, the better chance you have of finding a collision sooner. But uh, now it is also shown in the formula. And this motivates our further work in on, more on the implementation part, uh, where we uh, try to find uh, a data structure that we should use uh, for storing the distinguished points. So first, let us set some requirements that uh, we have for this data structure. Now, keep in mind, this is for uh, our model, because this can change immensely depending on uh, what you decide to do, how you decide to perform this algorithm. So we want the structure to be space efficient, that is, in every case, because we already saw the more we can store, the better the running time is. We want it, uh, of course, we need the algorithm to be thread safe, so we also want uh, to be able to lock only a portion of uh, the structure in order to make it thread safe. You don't want to lock the entire structure every time, because this uh, gives us a huge overhead when threads are waiting to store points. Uh, and this is why I say this depends on the on the architecture that you choose, because if you choose to have only one server that stores all of the points that it receives from many, many clients, then you don't need it to be thread safe if you have only one entity that is actually storing the points. So, But we put this as a requirement, we want it to be easily thread safe. And we, of course, want fast lookup and insertion. Now, classically, what is used, uh, as far as we know in the literature, if you want to have this requirement, you can use a hash table. Uh, in this work, we propose to replace the hash table with an alternative uh, structure, which we call a packed radix tree list. Now, let's decompose the name a bit. The structure is only inspired by radix trees. And so here um, on the right, we have an example of what a radix tree is, briefly. So a radix tree is a tree where each node is one letter of the word that we're going to store. Here I'm talking about letters and words because we're in basis what eight here. Uh, otherwise, you think about bits and bit vectors. Um, so, for instance, we store 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we create the, one, the node 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. Then we store 1, 2, 5, 4, 4. 1, 2 already exists, okay? So we are just going to add a child to the node 2 to continue our word here. So we profit from uh, the common prefixes. We don't allocate any more nodes. Now, Despite profiting from common prefixes, this is a very inefficient structure uh, at the implementation level because you see you really need to create all the structures. So you need to create the node, you need to create a pointer to the next node and so on. And um, it is not uh, efficient if you uh, have many pending leaves. They are just created for nothing. This is why we opted for a hybrid between um, radix tree and linked lists. Okay, we will show you what this means now. So um, let's say that we construct a radix tree up to a certain level, like in the picture, and then we add the points to linked list, each linked list starting from a leaf on the tree. Okay, and here we have a full tree. Imagine this is in base four, because it, um, uh, we have space on the slide for base four. And um, then uh, imagine we add this point. So 0011 is added here starting from the prefix 00, so it is added in this leaf. 0031 as well, okay, so which point is added to the prefix that it corresponds to. Now, um, notice that um, at the implementation level, since we know here that uh, all of the um, all of the leaves are going to be filled, okay, they will all exist, if we arrive at a, a level like that, and we will show you later that this is always possible, then we don't actually need to construct this tree. It's a fixed value. It's always uh, like this for every run of the algorithm, okay? So, 
And this is what our structure would look like uh, implemented. We only create an array, okay? And uh, the index of each array corresponds to the prefix of the points that will be stored in this slot. Okay, so for instance, here we store the point uh, 0011 and 0031 in this first slot. And uh, of course, these are our chain lists here. Uh, now, uh, this structure that you see here looks a lot like a hash table. I um, implementing it, it is exactly the same, the same structure. Now, I will tell you what are the subtle differences between this and the hash table and what makes it uh, makes this structure more appropriate for this type of application. So usually when you use a hash table, you want to have each element stored in a different slot, uh, preferably. Uh, you don't want to hash, have uh, hash table collisions. But in order to have this, uh, you have to allocate a bit more than the elements that you will store. So you need to allocate approximately three times than the elements that you have. And uh, this is uh, just not possible for this algorithm. We store a lot of points and so we know that we cannot al allocate huge hash tables and we will have to use linked lists anyway. So um, this is why there is no use to hash the value um, and put it uh, and try to avoid the hash table collisions. And when we don't hash the value, on the other hand, we can profit uh, from uh, common prefixes like we would in the radix tree. Notice here that I didn't copy the zero zero value, I just uh, copied the suffix of the point because there is no need. You know the, the index of the slot tells you which is the prefix of the point. Okay, so we will save a lot of space you will see using this when you scale it up. Um, another thing that we did is that the stored data um, is packed in a single vector. This means that, for instance, for the CDLP you need to store the x-coordinate and some other coefficient. Well, we uh, packed everything in a single vector so that we don't waste space on uh, alignment because space is very important in this case. And also, um, we will show you now on the other slides how we can estimate the optimal branching level, and we'll see what this means. Now, the optimal branching level, it's um, the, the level at which there are no pending leaves in the tree. This means that every, when you go into implementation, every slot in our array is uh, filled. And at the same time, the linked lists are as short as possible. Okay, so if you want just one of these requirements, for instance, there are no pending leaves, you can get a very small prefix and you are sure that every slot is filled, but you have very long lists. Uh, if you choose a longer prefix, then it is the other way around. So we want to find the right middle between the two requirements. Okay, so we equated this uh, problem that we have with a very known uh, problem, which is called the coupon collector's problem. Okay. So here we have a brief, um, we briefly recall what the coupon collector problem is. So let's say we have a given number of coupons. Here we have five coupons that each have a different color. And we want to collect all of them, but let's say each time we buy a coupon or we choose, uh, we can get any one of them, any one color. Okay, so the goal is to collect all five colors. And the question is, well, how many coupons do I need to buy in order to, assure, to be assured with a high probability that I will have collected all of the five coupons. Okay, like for instance here, we continued buying coupons until we found the last color, the yellow here. And why is this the same problem as the one we have? We, we inversely, we know how many points we are going to store in our structure. So let's say that is the set over here. And we want to know, well, how many slots do we need? Um, uh, which is the maximal number of slots that can be filled using this, all of these points. Okay. So that's how we are going to determine our optimal branching level. So we say that as per the coupon collector's problem, the optimal level is L such that, well, K, the number of points stored, is uh, bigger than or equal to, uh, here we have the number of elements, uh, the number of slots that we have, so B to the L, in our case, we store in binary, so this will be like 2 to the L, okay, so the number of leaves in the tree also, which will be the number of slots in our uh, array, uh, times Ln, the number of elements, plus a small constant, okay. So this is why, uh, knowing K, we calculate L. And uh, it uh, turns out also to be very accurate, we did experiments uh, trying to 
uh, fill the structure uh, using the level L, and it is full completely. And then when you go just one level lower, we, you start to see uh, empty slots. And it doesn't work as well with the hash table that we tried again. So finally, let's see some experimental results. Um, all of our experimental results concern uh, the elliptic curve discrete block uh, implementation. Um, and we use uh, curve uh, E over a finite uh, field FP with P prime. Uh, but we also adapted it for one collision and multi collision uh, search so that we can do all of these experiments. So in the multi collision case, think uh, elliptic curve discrete block uh, multi user setting. Uh, the theta is always 1 over 2 to the b over 4 where for a b bit curve. So for instance, here I will show you experiments on a 55 bit curve, which means that. Uh, the number of uh, trailing zero bits is uh, 13. So theta is 1 over 2 to the 13. And uh, what we did in these experiments here is that we wanted to show uh, that memory really is an important factor uh, even in the running time. So uh, we limited the memory for our smaller param smallest parameter. We limited it to uh, 1 gigabyte. And we asked the algorithm to find 4 million collisions. And we did this both with uh, using the PRTL structure and the hash table. Okay, so here are our findings. We see that the running time of the PRTL is uh, better than the running time of the hash table. And this is immediately explained when you see the number of store points. Okay, so with the PRTL, we managed to store about 48, uh, 46 million points and the hash table stored only 12 uh, million points. And... Um, this is actually the only reason that uh, the PRTL is better than the hash table. Otherwise, uh, with the insertion, the, the insertion time, and also with uh, the being thread safe and everything, they're pretty much equivalent. The only thing that we were able to gain is actually being able to store more, and this has a huge consequence in the, the running time. And then here are some <coughs> bigger parameters, so 2 gigabytes, and we asked for 16 million collisions. 4 gigabytes, we asked for 50 million collisions and we have the same outcome each time. First one is an average of 100 runs, and the other two are an average of only 10 runs because they take a lot of time. Okay, so we have an implementation in C. We use some external libraries for writing huge numbers and for parallelization. <clears throat> now to conclude, so we, we revisited uh, one collision and multi-collision time complexity analysis. And we showed uh, more precisely that memory is uh, an important factor in the running time complexity. So uh, as a result, uh, this was um, the motivation for our further work. So then we proposed an alternative memory structure that um, allows us to store a lot more than, uh, uh, well, a lot, that's subjective. It allows us to store more than a hash table while keeping all of the properties that a hash table has, like uh, fast insertion and um, are uh, being uh, thread safe seamless. And uh, we, if you are interested in this work, you, can, you should check out our artifact. Uh, we made it um, uh, so that it is seamless to add uh, other structures and compare them uh, both in terms of running time and memory. So thanks a lot for checking out our work and uh, <coughs> we look forward to your questions at the conference.